operation right now. Um, we put this, this is a custom made flashing because these beams were built up out of two by eights that we screwed together. And then we put one by eight cedar on the sides and kind of box them in and put a one by six cedar underneath. And on top, because we're going to get a lot of condensation on the back of the polycarbonate, or it's a distinct possibility, it's going to be high humidity. And I didn't want that water just dripping on top of the wood and in between the cracks and the seams. So we made this flashing, or had it made up at a sheet metal shop. And it just hooks over the edges a little bit. And then we used our two by two steel purlins. And those run the length of the building, which is 22 feet. And they're spaced just a little bit less than three feet apart. The, uh, with the snow loading on the polycarbonate, it said that we could have um, a 45 pound snow load, which is what we have in this area, with this spacing. And I really wanted to minimize the amount of structure to block the sun, so that when the sun's going over, that we've got as, as much open as possible. And this was the best way I could come up with on a budget. These are the, the base tracks basically where the seam of the polycarbonate's going to be, we put one of these. And so those are four feet on center, or a little bit over four feet on center, because you have to allow for expansion and contraction of the polycarbonate. It's pretty cold today, it's about 45 degrees, and the poly will expand one-eighth of an inch for every three feet with a 100 degree increase in temperature. So I doubt it's going to be 145, but we're allowing for that expansion in our spacing on these. And so once we get these screwed down, then we can go ahead and start installing the sheets of polycarbonate one at a time, and then we'll, as we go, we'll apply the caps. There's a cap piece, it's also an aluminum piece that goes on the other side of this, and then screws that'll go down every 12 inches. Okay. You'll notice that everything is white on the roof system, and that's because it's a nice reflective color, and when the light comes in, it bounces it around, and it doesn't just soak it up. Uh, if you're trying to retain heat or that kind of thing, you'd want to paint your wall black. But if you want to reflect the light, white is a good choice. So we ran this rain gutter at the bottom of our roof and it slopes down to this end. And we put this uh, two inch bulkhead fitting right here. And it actually goes through the building to the inside. And what we're gonna do is collect the rainwater We'll have six 55 gallon drums back in the root cellar that are going to be three across and then three on top of those. And so the rainwater will drain into the, the rain barrels. And then we'll utilize that water to replenish the troughs in the aquaponics because we're going to lose water to evaporation and transpiration as the plants take the moisture up and then put it out into the air. So this is a way of replenishing without using our community well, because we're on a small community well, and uh, we'll save on pumping water and also, you know, if the water was to go down, we'll still have some water. This is a tricky sheet. Water. Yeah. It can expand and contract up seven eighths of an inch in length total. And then sideways, these sheets can expand and contract almost a quarter of an inch in width, about three sixteenths probably. sheet of polycarbonate on the roof and it went pretty smooth other than it rained pretty much the whole time but we got it up anyway and uh, it's very nice inside now.